Liddington Castle in the direction of Marlborough. Not along the Ridgeway path, but I'll be following the route of a Roman road, known and loved by Thomas Hardy, and like him, I shall also, as I walk, be visioning on the vacant air, helmed legionaries who proudly rear the eagle as they pace again the Roman road. Marlborough. I love Marlborough. It's a spacious, handsome county town, important since the Roman occupation, with its own mint in Norman times. And it's full of architectural gems hidden away in nooks and crannies, alleys and ginnels, all leading out onto the wide old high street, which throughout the week is made ugly down its centre by a double row of parked vehicles, but not, I'm pleased to say, on market day. As you can see, the centre of the town is full up with market stalls, and it's not cluttered up with motor cars everywhere, like they are on my left, filling the town with exhaust, fumes and smoke. I'm hot, and I'm dusty, and I would love a pot of tea. Where better to go than Polly's celebrated tea rooms? Here, a new aesthetic and creative meaning has been given to the expression. A pot of tea for two, please. In icing sugar, of course. Taking of a dish of tea within the confines of Polly's Tea Rooms is to enjoy a range and variety, brand and blend of this thirst-quenching, problem-solving beverage from country raspberry to traditional Darjeeling, plus a mouth-watering display of delicacies, scones, cakes, tarts, meringues, created and baked on the premises for the gratification and enjoyment of courageous gourmets. I'm not going to ask you a word until I have a cup of tea, Mary. Oh, okay, I'm absolutely parched. I've walked miles. Oh, you're there lovely. You Thank go. you very much. Now we, right. can, we can get ahead. Tell me about some of the, the different things you make, because the variety that's know, on display is marvellous. Well, the fresh green gattos, I should think, are the most obvious, because you come through the door and they're just there. And they are different. And then you come into the restaurant and you have your varieties of small cakes. And we do the scones, the traditional scones, cheese scones, muesli scones. So you've so got to mix all these different all these batters up, haven't you? What all these different mixtures up. Yes. yes. There's two girls doing this in the in the bake kitchen, what we call, and then they will progress on to um, Danish pastries, which come up in the morning. Danish pastries, apple flans, and carry on with the smaller cakes because we have a large variety of smaller cakes. So some have to be baked on a certain day, and others, others have to be just coated in chocolate, cut up. So the girls have a rota of what they do on certain days. We also have a kitchen upstairs where Christine does all the specialities. Now this is the birthday cakes, wedding cakes, christening cakes. And you can have that in fruit or sponge, and a customer will come in, and perhaps with a photograph, and we will do them the cake to the specification, whatever size. The culinary and imaginative capabilities of the staff are also displayed in sculptural form with ice cakes decorated for every family and ceremonial occasion, depicting in eye-catching detail scenes from everyday or imaginary life. Christine Fishlock creates and decorates with skill, expertise and extreme patience, ensuring every last detail from colour contrast to the positioning of the dedication is absolutely correct. From the worlds of fantasy and fairy tale, 
to father's favourite hobby. I'm convinced the finished article, when delivered to the client, causes moments of heartbreaking indecision when the time arrives for the cutting of the cake, to cut or not to cut, or just admire it. Now that is the question. Happy birthday, Marlborough. A borough since 1204, renowned for its wide high street, with a perpendicular church at each end. Behind the town hall, St. Mary the Virgin of Henry VIII's time, and close by the green with unspoiled period architecture and Saxon origin. At the western end, the Tower of St. Peter and St. Paul, a monument to survival, whilst the relatively new Marlborough College provides atmosphere of contemporary thought in an aura of a bygone age that permeates this town. It is um, an old town, but at some point, probably in the 13th century, the two little bits, the, the one end being the castle and the other end being the little hamlet around the green, um, joined Huge. and Marlborough High Street was formed, uh, which of course was the original tourist route from London to Bristol. So it was full of inns and cafes and uh, places of um, repose, uh, just as it is today. So Marlborough, in that sense, hasn't changed economically that much. Was it necessarily as wide as it is today? Yes, I think it probably was. All these Cotswold towns, or cat towns on the fringe of the Cotswolds, were, were in fact sheep towns. I mean, sheep, as you know, were the great commodity of England. I mean, the Lord Chancellor doesn't sit on a gold throne, but on a wool sack. And um, the prosperity of these, uh, this area was phenomenal by anybody's standards in, in the Middle Ages, all the way through to the 17th century, when the big slump hit everybody because of the collapse of the wool trade. So I think the wide streets are because of that. Originally, there would have been a sort of shambles up the middle of the high street, and that, of course, led to the noted great fire, because the fire spread into the market shambles in the middle of the street and then wiped out the town in a very rapid ta time. Central Marlborough was devastated by fire three times, in 1653, 1679, and again in 1690. And after the last conflagration, thatch roofs were banned in the town by Act of Parliament. These contrasting architectural styles and materials and roof designs are a direct result of that edict. The college is fascinating. It's one of the really historic bits of England with the old castle mound there. And uh, there's a wonderful story about the mound, uh, formerly known as the Mount, now within the grounds of Marlborough College. The famous magician, Merlin, uh, fell in love with a rather lesser sorceress called Vivian. She wasn't really up to all that much. And, uh, but um, she said to Merlin, you can only have my wicked way with me if you teach me some of your better spells. So he thought, well, he'd go for this. And, um, taught us some of the better spells, one of which unfortunately was how you shut a, a magician in a mound for all eternity, you see. So that's exactly what happened. And at the bottom of the mound there's now a lovely 18th century grotto, which was built by Lady Hartford, who was a great patroness of poets in the early 18th century. She brought a Scottish poet called James Thompson down here, who sat on a stone, which has been refound in the middle of the River Kennet, and wrote uh, the most popular poem in the 18th century, The Four Seasons. Unfortunately, Lady Hartford complained that Mr. Thompson preferred to get drunk with Lord Hartford than to actually uh, read poetry to Lady Hartford. But uh, I'd have thought to deliver the most famous poem of the 18th century wasn't bad for a couple of nights bed and breakfast. <laughs> That's unreasonable. The grotto was built sometime between 1715 and 1735. Its interior walls are lined with every variety of exotic shells available at that time, held together with blue slag. And a more recent restoration added the beautiful blue New Zealand poor shell. Up here, he said. Didn't tell me it was this steep. Ah, 
such a steep old hill, I'll tell you that, but it's worth it to come up here because you can see behind me the roof of Marlborough College. This mound is in the grounds of Marlborough College and it's known as Merlin's Mound and they call it that because he is supposed to be incarcerated deep within this mound. It was part of that long, bitter battle he carried on with Morgan Le Fay, and she finally won. And there he sits and waits until this nation is in dire peril, and then he will come and save us. And I don't think he could have found a better time than right now, personally. Thank you.